Who is Shaquille O'Neal? It was February 7, 1993 and the Orlando Magic were playing the Phoenix Suns in the National Basketball Association NBA game. The NBA is a men's professional basketball league that plays in North America. The Magic were only in their fourth season in the NBA. Their game was being broadcast live on national television for the first time in franchise history while a sold-out crowd of over 19,000 fans watched the game in the Suns America West Arena. Everybody was focused on rookie Shaquille O'Neal, the Magic 7-foot-1, 300-pound center. Shaq, pronounced Shaq, played basketball like a bulldozer. In a game filled with giants, Shaq was still taller and stronger than his opponents. Defenders who got in this way could end up on the floor or in the third row. When he gets the ball under the basket, I pray he misses, said Hakim Olajuwon, another seven-foot-tall NBA center. He's so big and he can't be stopped. In the matchup against the Suns, Super Shaq did not disappoint his fans. Less than three minutes into the game, he went up for a thundering two-handed dunk. The Shaq attack did not just bring down the rim and the backboard. It also pulled down the entire basket structure, the rim and net, the six-foot-by-three-foot backboard, and the bar and post the backboard and rim were attached to onto the court. Players scattered out of the way to safety. No one had ever seen anything like it. No other player had ever had the strength and power to do something like that. The game had to be delayed for 37 minutes as workers brought in a whole new basket replacement. Shaq stood on the sideline and smiled a giant 1,000-watt smile. He's a serious basketball player, but he knows how to have fun while playing the game, too. I was a little surprised, he said later about the mighty dunk. But when it started coming down, I started running the other way. Shaq finished the game with 20 points but the Magic lost the game 121-105. to The score didn't really matter though the Hercules-sized dunk announced to the world that the 20-year-old Shaquille O'Neal was Superman in a basketball uniform. He was a star like no other. Chapter 1 An Army Kid Shaquille Rashawn O'Neal was born on March 6, 1972 in Newark, New Jersey. His mother explained that Shaquille Rashawn is an Arabic name, that means little warrior. As he grew up Shaquille's name sometimes got shortened to Shaq by family and friends. Shaquille was less than eight pounds at birth and average weight for a baby. Shaquille's mother Lucille O'Neal was six feet, two inches tall. She was 18 years old when her son was born. Shaquille's father, Joseph Tony, was a couple years older than Lucille and an inch shorter when Shaquille was only six months old. Joseph left Newark he was later sent away to jail. At first, Lucille raised Shaquille with help from women in her family. But when her son was two years old Lucille married Philip Harrison. Philip was an army reserve sergeant. By the time Shaquille was four years old he was a head taller than other kids his age. When Lucille went out with her son she had to make sure people treated Shaquille like a toddler and not like an older child. Because of Philip's job in the army Shaquille and his family moved around a lot. On average military families are relocated every three years because some members of the military require new training while others often achieve new positions. When Shaquille was five his family moved from Newark to Bayonne, New Jersey when he was in third grade. The family moved to Fort Monmouth in Edentown, New Jersey. Moving was hard on Shaquille he had to try to make new friends repeatedly. He was lonely much of the time. Watching cartoons helped him adjust to each new move. His favorite character, Superman, was always there for him. During this time, Lucille and Philip had three children together, two daughters, Latifah and Aisha, and a son, Jamal. Shaq was a great big brother and always looked out for them. My mom taught me to change diapers, powder them, everything, said Shaq. Philip's army training made him strict with the children, but especially with Shaquille. Sometimes Shaquille goofed off in school, trying to impress new friends. Philip would go to the school to make sure his stepson was paying attention and behaving. When Shaquille did something wrong, Philip would spank him to make sure he didn't do it again. Kids tease Shaquille for being so tall. 
They called him names like Shakia the Gorilla or Bigfoot. They told him that he was probably dumb and had been held back because he was so much bigger than anybody else. Shaquille got into fights because of all the teasing. My parents told me be proud of my size but I wasn't Shaquille said I wanted to be normal. The one place Shaquille felt at home was at the local boys and girls club in whichever town the family was living. He went every day after school until his mom and dad came home from work. Going to the club gave Shaquille something to do with his time. It also helped him stay out of trouble. Shaquille did his homework, played games, and spent time doing a lot of different sports, including basketball. Shaq wasn't any good yet. He just liked playing. I was clumsy, Shaquille said. I hadn't really grown into my body. Of course, everybody expected me to excel because I was so big. Good luck explaining to people it doesn't work that way. By age 11, Shaquille was already 6 feet 4 inches tall. The average height for an 11-year-old boy is almost 2 feet shorter. Shaquille had to stop trick or treating on Halloween because of his size. Boys and Girls Clubs of America The Boys and Girls Clubs of America is an organization that provides after-school programs for children all over the United States. The clubs mostly run in our school buildings offer sports, homework help, reading, arts and crafts, and computer time. The organization was started over 100 years ago to provide a safe, fun, and productive way to spend time after school. Today, nearly 4 million children are members of the 4,300 clubs across the United States. When I would go to the door, Shaquille said, people would just stand there, looking at me with their eyes wide open. You're too big to be trick or treating, ain't you? In the middle of his fifth grade year, Shaquille's stepdad was transferred again, this time to Fort Stewart in Hinesville, Georgia. After a short stay in Georgia, Shaquille and his family moved again to an army base in Wiesbaden, Germany, in 1984. Although Shaquille didn't know it at the time, his basketball career was just about to take off. Chapter 2 Germany There wasn't much for Shaquille to do in Germany. He was in a whole new country where it snowed a lot and people spoke a different language. Shaquille still showed off in school to help make new friends. One day, he tried to teach his classmates how to break dance. Many American kids were doing these acrobatic hip-hop moves, but some of the kids from Germany had never seen them before. When Shaquille got on the ground to demonstrate a move, the teacher thought he was sick or having a seizure. She called his parents to come and take him to the doctor, but they knew Shaquille was fine. He practiced break dancing around the house all the time. When Shaquille wasn't dancing, he continued to help his mom with his brother and sisters. Shaquille loved being around younger kids. He loved playing with them and having fun. He nicknamed himself Shaq Daddy. Shaquille also spent a lot of time playing basketball. His stepfather practiced with him doing one-on-one -on -one drills and teaching him to shoot and play defense. By the time Shaquille was 13 years old, he was 6 feet 8 inches tall. But he still wasn't that great at basketball and wasn't even playing on an organized team. I couldn't jump over a pencil, Shaquille said. I couldn't run or shoot. I had to practice. One day, an American college basketball coach visited the Army base to run a basketball clinic, a meeting where basketball players are evaluated and given instruction for local kids. Shaquille went to the clinic, too. The man's name was Dale Brown, and he was the head coach at Louisiana State University. When he saw Shaquille, he asked him, How long have you been in the Army, soldier? Shaquille explained he wasn't in the Army. He was just a teenager. Coach Brown couldn't believe it. He knew a kid this size could be a great basketball player one day if he worked hard. During Shaquille's sophomore year of high school, his family was transferred back to the United States. They moved to San Antonio, Texas. All this moving was both good and bad for Shaquille. It was difficult because he had to adjust to a new school again and again. Moving so often can be hard especially for a kid who didn't blend in with everybody else. However, moving so much was also good for Shaquille. 
It helped him become comfortable around strangers. It made him outgoing. He loved to joke and make other people smile. This was a trait that would stick with him his whole life. We made friends easier and quicker and adapted to new situations simply because we had to Shaquille explained about himself and his siblings. It was a survival tool. Chapter 3 Star of the State In 1987, Shaquille went to Robert G. Cole High School in San Antonio, Texas. He arrived from Germany too late to play for their basketball team as a sophomore, so he had to wait until his junior year. By 1988, at age 16, Shaquille was 6 feet, 10 inches tall. All his daily practice habits from Germany had helped him become a much smoother player. He felt more comfortable with his height. He was athletic and powerful. Believe it or not, Shaquille still couldn't dunk the basketball, though. Basketball hoops are 10 feet off the ground, and players a lot shorter than Shaq can dunk easily. Shaq's new coach, Dave Madura, began working with Shaq to help him jump higher. He made Shaq do squats crouching and standing up with heavy weights on his shoulders, until his legs felt like they were on fire. Then a friend of Shaq started working with him to dunk, asking him to first dunk a sock. When Shaq could do that, he gave him a tennis ball, then a softball, then a volleyball, until finally he handed him a basketball. Once Shaquille learned to dunk, he couldn't stop. Shaquille began working even harder on his game. He played a lot with the enlisted men who lived on the army base, since some of these men were a little closer to his size. When Shaquille wasn't playing basketball, he watched it on television. I'd sit back and watch Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing and take all sorts of mental notes. Shaquille said about watching the former NBA stars. Now when I closed my eyes, I wasn't dreaming about the Hulk or Superman anymore. I was dreaming about Ewing and Jordan. Shaq became a national star during his two seasons at Cole High School. He was the biggest and toughest high school player anybody had ever seen. Newspapers around the country wrote about how great he was. His games were sold out every night. Little kids lined up and asked him for autographs. College coaches came to his practices and games to try to get him to come to their schools. His teammates began calling him Shaquille the Deal. By his senior year, Shaquille was offered more than 100 college basketball scholarships. That meant he could study at a university for free if he committed to playing basketball for the school's team. Shaquille loved all the attention. Maybe too much. He bragged a lot to his teammates and acted like he could win the games all on his own. One day, instead of practicing, Shaquille stood on the sidelines talking to a girl. Coach Madura told Shaquille to get on the court and run. Coach made me run until I almost threw up said Shaq Shaquille soon changed his ways. He still loved to joke around, but only at the right time and place. During his senior year in 1989, Shaquille averaged 31 points, 22 rebounds, and 8 blocked shots per game. He led his team to the Texas State Championship title, their first one in school history. After the season, he was named the co-most valuable player of the elite McDonald's High School All-American Games scoring 18 points, grabbing 16 rebounds, and blocking 6 shots. He was one of the best players in the country. Shaquille chose to attend Louisiana State University LSU, coached by Dale Brown. Coach Brown was the man Shaquille had met while his family was living in Germany. They had kept in touch, writing letters back and forth over the years. Dale Brown promised Shaquille he would teach him to be one of the world's best basketball players. He also promised he would teach him to be a good student and a good man. I just want you to know I'm recruiting a human being first and a basketball player second, Coach Brown told Shaquille's stepfather. Shaquille became a good student. Even though he hoped to play professional basketball one day, he still wanted to get an education too. LSU seemed like a school where he could do both things well. Chapter 4 Tiger Years Shaquille had to learn to adjust his game once he arrived at Louisiana State University in 1989. He wasn't the only star anymore. 
the Tigers already had a lot of good players. There were upper-class men on the team who were better and more experienced than Shaquille. I thought I was the man, Shaquille said. What I realized when I got to LSU was that everyone there was the man. Coach Brown was just as strict and tough with Shaquille as Shaquille's stepdad had been. If Shaquille or any of the other players missed class, they had to get up at 5.30 in the morning and go running. Coach Brown also gave all his players keys to the gym. This meant they could go and practice on their own whenever they wanted to do so. Shaquille used his key a lot. When his teammates went to a party, he headed to the gym and practiced his game instead. Coach Brown also asked a former NBA player, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to work with Shaquille in practice. Kareem was 7 feet 2 inches tall and one of the best centers to ever play the game. Fans started to wonder whether Shaquille could one day be as good as Kareem, who was famous for his hook shot. He had won three National Collegiate Athletic Association NCAA titles at the University of California, Los Angeles UCLA, and went on to become one of the highest scorers in NBA history. Kareem saw it differently. Don't call Shaquille the next anybody, warned Kareem. Let him be the first Shaquille. Shaq really looked up to Kareem and even chose to wear the number 33, the same number Kareem wore. During Shaquille's freshman year, he blocked 115 shots, a Southeastern Conference record. The Southeastern Conference is a group of colleges, mainly located in the southeast part of the United States, that compete against each other in a variety of sports. Shaq's record was the sixth highest total in the country. He also led the conference in rebounds per game, ranking ninth in the country. Shaquille did well in the classroom, too. He finished the year with a 3.0 grade point average, a solid B. This was the highest average on the team. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 1947-2 Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, born Ferdinand Luis Osindor Jr., played basketball for UCLA, where he led the team to three straight national championship titles. He perfected his famous skyhook, a one-handed shot that involves him releasing the ball from the highest possible point while using his body to shield the defender, in college because the NCAA did not allow players to dunk. In 1969, he was the number one pick in the NBA draft and played for the Milwaukee Bucks. He would later play for the Los Angeles Lakers. In his 20-year career, Kareem won six NBA championship titles and was a six-time NBA MVP. He was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1995. Shaq practiced hard during the summer between his freshman and sophomore seasons. He played pickup basketball for three hours a day. At night he did calf raises to make his legs stronger, something he had been doing since high school. He also worked on new moves, like a baby hook shot. When he came back to school as a sophomore, Shaquille had increased his vertical leap by eight inches in one summer. He could now dunk the ball over any opposing player. Shaq may be unguardable, said one opposing coach. This guy may have the physical talent and personal discipline to be the best, said another. Shaquille was now seven feet, one inch tall and weighed 294 pounds. He was nearly impossible to push around. He led the nation in rebounding, averaging 14. Seven per game and ranked seventh in the nation in scoring. He also blocked 140 shots a national record for college sophomores. The Associated Press News Syndicate named him the National Player of the Year. The Tigers shared the conference title that year with Mississippi State University. Articles in newspapers and magazines started to name Shaquille the best center on the planet. Shaquille loved being in the spotlight and bragged about himself a lot. He always did it with a big wink and a smile, though, like he was sharing an inside joke with the world. Shaquille had nicknames for everything, including his celebration dances. He wore a black baseball cap with, I am the Shacknificent, written on it. He stayed up late into the night listening to music and even creating new songs. He liked to rap for fun and sometimes talked and rhyme. As a junior, Shaquille was the nation's leading shot blocker and ranked second in rebounding. Unfortunately, 
LSU lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Shaquille decided not to return to LSU for his senior year. Instead, he entered the NBA draft. Shaquille promised his mom he would eventually go back and complete his college degree. But for now, he was ready to join a professional team. The NBA draft. The NBA draft takes place every June or July. The 30 NBA teams each draft, or select, college and international players to join their squad the following season. The teams with the worst record the previous season get the top picks in the draft. Since 1989, the draft has had two rounds. In total, 60 players are picked. Players are drafted not just from the United States, but from all over the world. Chapter 5, Magic Man Now that Shaquille declared he was entering the NBA draft, the NBA's general managers, the people who run the NBA teams, all said they would pick Shaquille if they got the chance. In 1992, the Orlando Magic team based in Orlando, Florida, got to pick the first player in the draft lottery. On June 24, the NBA draft took place in Portland, Oregon. Shaquille O'Neal was there with many of his closest friends and family. He called the group his Love Shack. The league commissioner, David Stern, stood behind a microphone and announced, with the first pick in the NBA draft, the Orlando Magic picked Shaquille O'Neal the room bursts out in applause. Shaq gave a big smile, looked into the television camera and said, Who, me? He was joking, of course. Shaq knew he would be picked first. Shaquille flew down to Florida the following day. He was greeted at the airport by large groups of fans, lots of balloons, and the Orlando Magic cheerleaders and dancers. Shaq put on a pair of Mickey Mouse ears and gave a big grin. I couldn't believe the greeting I got when I landed. People were jamming the airport terminal, Shaquille said. Shaquille signed a contract with the Magic that paid him $41 million over the next seven years. He picked the number 32 jersey, 33, his college number, was already taken, so he tried to get as close as he could. At the time, this was the biggest rookie contract in any sport. He also signed a deal with the sneaker company Reebok, which paid him $3 million to wear and promote their sneakers. Shaquille was given his own Reebok shoe called the Shaq Attack. Each pair of his sneakers would sell for $135. This was also the biggest sneaker contract ever for a rookie athlete. Shaquille had not played one second in a professional game, and he already had more money than he had ever imagined. This was mostly because he was so good at basketball. It was also because he was such a likable man. Many professional athletes were grim and serious. But Shaquille always looked like he was having fun. Shaquille went home to San Antonio to get ready for the upcoming season. But first he took one day to celebrate. He went on the slides at Splashdown, a water park in the area, with friends from high school. Shaquille was a multimillionaire, but he was still a big kid at heart. Filling Shaq's shoes, the average grown man wears a size 10 and a half shoe, but Shaquille wears a size 22. His shoes are about 16 inches long, but most companies don't make shoes this size. Reebok made Shaquille a new custom pair for every game. Shaquille also gets his regular shoes and everyday clothes specially made. The typical suit for a man requires four and a half yards of cloth. Shaq's suits require seven and a quarter yards. Shaq's feet are tied for the biggest to ever play in the NBA. Senator Bob Lanier, who played in the NBA in the 1970s and 1980s, was six feet 11 inches tall and also wore size 22. Shaquille played in his first NBA game on November 6, 1992. The Magic beat the Miami Heat by a score of 110 to 100. Shaquille had 12 points, 18 rebounds, and 3 blocked shots. And he only got better as the season went on. He became the first rookie to start an all-star game since Michael Jordan in 1985. Players in the All-Star Game are voted on the team by fans and players. Then Shaq received the fourth highest number of votes, even though he was only a rookie. Throughout the season, Shaquille continued to show off his fun side. 
he went on a talk show and rapped for the crowd. When he went to dinner in Orlando, or when he visited other cities for games, he always gave fans the biggest smile as he signed autographs. Michael Jordan, 1963-2 Michael was a star player at the University of North Carolina and was drafted to the Chicago Bulls in 1984. He played in the NBA until 2003 and won six NBA titles with the Chicago Bulls. Like Shaquille, Michael was as famous off the basketball court as he was on it. The Nike company created a sneaker line called Air Jordans. They are the best-selling sneakers of all time. The sports drink Gatorade created one of the catchiest advertising songs ever called, I Wanna Be Like Mike. Many people say Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player ever. He played like he could fly, jumping higher and staying in the air longer than any other player. Michael Jordan entered the NBA Hall of Fame in 2009. Shaq's monstrous dunks became famous. During his rookie season he brought two entire baskets, the rim, the backboard, and the entire post, down onto the court. No player had ever done this before. The first time he did it was in his first nationally televised game. The second time it happened, the magic radio announcer still couldn't believe his eyes. He brought it down. He brought the whole gold down. The announcer screamed into his microphone as he watched Shaquille Dunk unfold. The magic went 41-41 to during Shaquille's rookie season. He helped the team win 20 more games than they had the previous season. Shaquille was named the NBA Rookie of the Year. Chapter 6 Superman Shaquille's second season in the NBA was even better than his first. He finished second in the league in scoring, and the Magic went 50-32, to making the playoffs for the first time in team history. In the fall of 1993, Shaquille took his love of rap and turned it into a side career. He released his first rap album, Shaq Diesel. The album sold more than one million copies. He also starred in a college basketball movie titled, Blue Chips, and appeared in many commercials for Reebok and Pepsi Soda. Shaq was doing it all. Playing basketball, dancing, singing, and acting. Shaquille lived his everyday life in a big way, too. He bought a mansion in Orlando that was 23,000 square feet. Shaquille's house had a pool, a full-size indoor basketball court, a giant soda machine, and all kinds of video games. After he turned pro, Shaquille tattooed a Superman logo on his left bicep. He even nicknamed himself Superman. And just like his favorite superhero, Shaquille liked helping people. He bought a new home for his mom, stepdad, and siblings in Orlando. He wanted his family nearby while he played. He stopped by often for his mom's home cooking. He also bought houses for both sets of his grandparents. He liked to slip $100 bills to people who are living on the street. He visited sick kids in the hospital. Over Christmas, he dressed like Shaka Claus and delivered toys to kids in poor neighborhoods. My parents taught me to give back, Shaquille said. It was understood that if I became rich and famous like we thought I would, then I would share the wealth. But just like Superman, Shaquille also had one weakness, making free throws. Slamming the ball through the hoop with three defenders hanging on his back was no problem for Shaquille, but shooting uncontested from 15 feet away it became a source of frustration. Once other teams realized he struggled from the free throw line, they began to foul him more and more. At times, this was the only way defenders could stop him. This type of defense strategy even had your name, Hack a Shack. When Shaquille was fouled, he got to go to the free throw line to shoot two shots. Even though these shots were unguarded, Shaquille could only manage to sink about half of them. The top free throw shooters in the league made more than 90% of their shots. The magic shooting coach worked with Shaquille all year. They tried to fix his shooting form. Nothing worked. Unfortunately, Shaquille would struggle with foul shooting his entire career. Despite this flaw, Shaquille's time in Orlando was magical. In the 1994-1995 season, Orlando had the best record in their conference and made it all the way to the NBA Finals before losing to the Houston Rockets in four straight games. 
Off the court, he released three more rap albums and starred in another movie. In Kazam, Shaquille played a 3,000-year-old genie who was released from a boombox, a large portable radio, to grant a boy three wishes. Kazam wasn't popular with critics, and it wasn't very successful, but Shaquille was still happy he made it. I go through airports, and kids would run up to me and shout chasm, with the biggest all smiles on their faces, and it made me laugh. Every time, he explained. Shaquille missed 28 games in the beginning of the 1995-1996 season because he had a broken thumb. The Magic still made it to the NBA playoffs, but lost in the conference finals to Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. There were starting to be whispers that Shaq was great, but he couldn't win an NBA championship. At the end of the 1995-1996 season, Shaq decided to opt out of his contract with the Magic and become a free agent. This meant he could sign again with Orlando or any other team for even more money. Every team wanted Shaquille, and they were willing to pay a lot to get him. Chapter 7 Go West, Young Man The Los Angeles Lakers offered Shaquille $120 million over seven years to come and play for their team. It was the highest contract in the history of the NBA at that time. For a man who loved to rap and star in movies, Los Angeles was the perfect place. A lot of movies and music albums are made in Hollywood, a neighborhood of Los Angeles. On July 18, 1996, Shaquille accepted the offer. He was now officially a Laker. Shaquille also joined the United States basketball team at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Shaquille was thrilled to play for a gold medal in Atlanta. The 1996 United States team, filled with other NBA stars, won their games by an astounding average margin of 32.3 points. They easily beat Yugoslavia for the gold medal, 95-69. to Along with winning an Olympic gold medal, Shaq also hit another milestone that summer. He became a parent alongside his girlfriend, Arnetta Yardborg. Their daughter, Tahira, was born on July 19, 1996. Shaq loved being a dad. He recorded his voice saying, Daddy's right here, so his baby could hear his voice while he was away. Despite enjoying his new role as a father, Shaquille had a rough time during the first three seasons in Los Angeles. On the basketball court, he was injured and missed a lot of games. Off the court, Shaquille made a superhero movie called Steel that came out in the summer of 1997. He made another rap album that came out in September 1998. Neither the movie nor the album won any awards. But Shaq didn't mind too much because he was doing something he loved. Shaquille and Arnetta were also no longer a couple. Shaq began dating another woman named Shawnee Nelson. The Lakers made it to the playoffs in Shaq's first three seasons, but they never made it to the NBA championship. Sports fans, writers, and television and radio announcers criticized Shaquille. They questioned if he was ever going to lead his team to an NBA title. They pointed out that he had not won a national championship in college either. Some fans and sports writers blamed Shaquille for spending too much time making movies and rap albums and not enough time practicing basketball. Shaquille worried about winning a championship, too. After three years in L.A., none of my dreams about getting a ring were even closer to coming true, he said. Shaquille didn't want to be the best player on teams that couldn't win a championship. Chapter 8. A Champion In the summer of 1999, the Lakers hired a new coach named Phil Jackson. Phil had been the head coach of the Chicago Bulls from 1989 to 1998. He led the Bulls to six NBA titles. Shaquille was thrilled Phil Jackson was now the Lakers' coach. Phil explained to Shaquille that he had to get into better physical shape. Coach Jackson also reminded Shaquille basketball is a team game. Shaquille couldn't win by himself. It was the same message Shaquille's high school coach had told him years earlier. Coach Jackson wanted Shaquille to get along with one teammate in particular, Kobe Bryant. Kobe was just as big of a star as Shaquille. But Kobe was six years younger, 
and was more serious on and off the court. Shaquille would laugh and joke around with his teammates on bus rides. He would do raps off the top of his head. Kobe sat with his headphones on and quietly listened to music. The stars did have one thing in common, though. They both really wanted to win the title. Shaquille and Kobe put their differences aside during the 1999-2000 season. The Lakers won 67 games during the regular season. This was the most Lakers had won in 28 years. Shaquille averaged 29.7 points and 13.6 rebounds per game and was named the league's most valuable player for the first time. Around this time, Shaquille and Shawnee also had a son together, Sheriff. Kobe Bryant, 1978-2020 Kobe Bryant was drafted into the NBA right out of high school in 1996. He played for the Los Angeles Lakers throughout his 20-year career and won five NBA championships, led the league in scoring two times, and was named an All-Star 18 times. After Kobe retired from basketball in 2016, he ran his own entertainment production company and won an Academy Award for an animated short film he wrote called Dear Basketball. Kobe also owned his own training facility for young athletes. On January 26, 2020, Kobe died in the helicopter crash along with his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, called Gigi, and seven others. Kobe's fans mourned the loss of one of the most exciting athletes to ever play in the NBA. During the NBA playoffs, Shaquille played even better than he did during the regular season. The Western Conference Finals between the Lakers and the Portland Trail Blazers came down to Game 7. After a slow start in the final game, Shaquille came alive in the fourth quarter. On one memorable play, Kobe lobbed the ball way up high for Shaq to dunk. The lob came down behind Shaquille. In one swift motion, Shaq reached behind his head with his right hand, grabbed the ball, then slammed it into the basket. The crowd went wild. The Lakers went on to win the game and the series, four games to three. Shaquille called it, the greatest dunk and highlight of my career. Three days later, the Lakers faced the Indiana Pacers for the championship. In Game 1, Shaquille scored 43 points and grabbed 19 rebounds and the Lakers won easily. After the game, a reporter asked Shaquille how he would guard himself. Reporters loved to ask Shaquille questions. He gave funny answers. This time Shaquille responded, I wouldn't. I just fake an injury and go home. The Lakers eventually won the final series, four games to two. Shaquille was awarded the NBA Finals MVP. More importantly, he was finally a champion. Shaquille and Kobe gave each other a big hug after the final game. Their differences didn't matter for the moment. They were both champions. Famous Lakers fans, like Jack Nicholson and Will Smith, also gave Shaquille hugs. Everybody loves a winner, Shaquille concluded. And nobody could say ever again the Shaq couldn't win the big one. Chapter 9 Two More Now that Shaquille had his championship ring, he wanted something to go with it, a college diploma. When he left Louisiana State University, he promised his mom he would go back and get his degree one day. Over the years, Shaq has been taking classes in the off-season. He finally earned his degree on December 15, 2000. I'm very proud of him, Shaquille's mother, Lucille, said. He made a promise to me, he set his goal, and he achieved it. Shaquille joked around at his graduation. He said Alice you stood for love Shaquille University. After receiving his degree, he teased, I feel secure I can get a real job now. He was also serious about how important his education was. I have a lot of money, Shaquille said, but I wouldn't be able to handle it without an education. The college graduate continued to school his opponents on the court, too. The Lakers won the NBA championship for the second straight season in 2001. Shaquille averaged over 15 rebounds and 30 points during the playoffs. He was named the NBA Finals MVP after the Lakers beat the Philadelphia 76ers for the title, four games to one. In the final championship game, he scored 29 points, grabbed 13 rebounds, and blocked five shots. 
Shaquille was double-teamed a lot. He overpowered not just one defender, but two. He's awesome, stupendous, fabulous, and dominating, said Shaquille's teammate Ron Harper. I know that is the same thing I say about him every game, but what else is there to say? In the fall of 2001, Shaq's family was also growing bigger. He and Shawnee had a second child together, a daughter named Amira. In the 2002 NBA playoffs, the toughest series the Lakers faced was in the Western Conference Finals against the Sacramento Kings. Shaquille scored 41 points and even made 13 of 17 free throws to help the Lakers come from behind to win a crucial Game 6. During the NBA Finals, the Lakers faced the New Jersey Nets. Game 3 was played in New Jersey, and Shaquille bought 80 tickets for his friends and family who lived nearby in Newark. He now lived in a mansion in California, but he didn't forget where he grew up, either. With all his friends and family watching, Shaquille averaged 36.3 points per game and was named the NBA Finals MVP for the third year in a row. They swept the Nets in four games, becoming only the fifth team in NBA history to three-peat, or win three titles in a row. Teammate Kobe Bryant came up to him after the game and said, Congratulations, greatest. Shaquille responded to Kobe, Congratulations, most dominant. Chapter 10. A Fair Trade In December 2002, Shaquille and Shawnee got married. In April 2003, their third child and second son, Shakir, was born. The Lakers won 50 games during the 2002-2003 regular season, but lost to the San Antonio Spurs in the Western Conference semifinals. Shaquille wasn't just training for basketball all season, though. He had also enrolled himself in the Los Angeles Port Police Academy. Ever since Shaquille was a kid, he wanted to be a police officer. He had two uncles who were officers, and his stepdad was an army sergeant. On some days, Shaquille would go right from practice to the police academy for training. Soon after the season ended, Shaquille was sworn in as a reserve police officer. Reserve police officers are volunteers, but they receive the same training and work alongside full-time officers. Oh, it was a lot of work, but I absolutely loved it. Shaquille said about his law enforcement training. Shaquille loved to do things for others, and he thought being a police officer was a great way to help people. Shaq knew, though, the one police job he'd never be able to do, work undercover. Shaquille played through the 2003 to 2004 with an injured toe. The Lakers finished the regular season with a 56 to 26 record. They made it back to the NBA Finals but lost to the Detroit Pistons, four games to one. The defeat was disappointing for the Lakers, and the season had been difficult, especially because Shaquille and Kobe fought a lot. When Shaquille joined the Lakers in 1996, Kobe had been an 18-year-old rookie who started only six games all season. It was Shaquille's team, but now, Kobe had become the Lakers' leading scorer, and he expected Shaquille to share the spotlight. Shaquille thought Kobe was a ball hog who shot the ball whenever he wanted. Shaquille didn't want to play on the same team as Kobe anymore. He demanded to be traded. On July 14, 2004, Shaq was traded to the Miami Heat. The Heat gave the Lakers three players and two draft picks just to get Shaquille. Lakers fans were disappointed to lose their favorite man, but Miami fans were thrilled. Shaquille, now age 32, guaranteed he would win a championship title for the team. He also joked, I'm like toilet paper, pampers, and toothpaste. I'm definitely proven to be good Miami fans loved him. Over 400 number 32 jerseys, Shaquille number, were sold on the team's website in the first two hours they became available. Shaquille was officially a Miami man now. Chapter 11. A Fourth Ring. After breaking up with Kobe and the Lakers, Shaquille had something to prove, and his first season in Miami was his best in a couple years. The Heat 159 games, led by a healthy Shaquille and shooting star Dwayne Wade. Whereas Shaquille and Kobe had fought over the ball, Shaquille and Dwayne seemed to like sharing it. Their first seasons together had many highlights, 
but they lost to the Detroit Pistons, four games to three, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Shaq played in 73 games, the most since 2001, and made his 12th All-Star game in a row. Shaquille bought another giant house when he moved to Miami. Usually when Shaquille would buy a house, he had to make construction changes to it so that it fit his size. But Shaquille bought this house from a former 7-foot NBA player. The showers and ceilings were already tall enough for Shaquille. The following 2005-2006 to season, Shaquille and Dwayne led the Heat to their first NBA title. They beat the Dallas Mavericks, four games to two. This was now Shaquille's fourth NBA title. Everything I had promised the city of Miami had come true, Shaquille said. We won a championship, we owned the city, and I had proven I could win anywhere. In the spring of 2006, Shaq and Shawnee welcomed their fourth child together, a daughter named M. Miara. In the summer of that year, Shaquille went over to China to sell his own brand of sports clothes. Basketball is one of the most popular sports around the world, and China has a second-largest fan base behind the United States. Speaking to a big crowd in Beijing, Shaquille bowed and said, Hello, I am Shaquille O'Neal and I love China. The people in China loved him right back. Journalists and fans followed him everywhere he went. Shaquille was having a great time. Some teammates and fans back in Miami were unhappy with Shaquille. They thought he shouldn't be traveling. He should be getting ready for the season. Shaquille disagreed. I can't hide who I am just because some people don't think I'm serious enough, he said. When it comes time to take care of business, I'm going to take care of business. When it's time for fun, I'm going to have fun. This is how Shaquille lived his entire life. Unfortunately, though, the following season wasn't any fun for Shaquille or the Heat. Shaquille missed 50 games of the regular season because of a knee injury. In true Shaquille fashion, he still found some time to amuse himself and his fans. At a practice session for the All-Star Game in February 2007, Shaquille started break dancing at center court like he did when he was a kid. This time, though, he didn't get yelled at. His fans and All-Star teammates cheered him on. In the first round of the playoffs, the Chicago Bulls swept the Heat. It was the first time a defending NBA champion was swept in the first round of the playoffs in 50 years. The 2007-2008 season was even worse for Shaquille. At 36, Shaq was now one of the oldest players in the league. His body was beat up. He continued to battle injuries and averaged a career-low 14.2 points per game. Soon Shaquille was traded to the Phoenix Suns. He was moving back west, but it wouldn't be for long. Chapter 12 Moving on with no regrets After Shaquille left Miami, he played single seasons for the Phoenix Suns, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Boston Celtics from 2008 to 2011. However, he had so many injuries, he only played 53 games in Cleveland alongside LeBron James and 37 games with the Celtics. All those years of getting fouled and hit had taken its toll. Shaquille was now 39 years old. It was time for him to hang up his giant sneakers. He retired on June 2, 2011, after 19 seasons in the league. During his entire career, he had been named an All-Star 15 times. We did it. 19 years, baby, Shaquille said in a video message to his fans. I want to thank you very much. That's why I'm telling you first, I'm about to retire. Love you, talk to you soon. Shaquille didn't fade into the background, though. That just wasn't him. Instead, he joined the show inside the NBA on the cable TV station, TNT. He talks about the current league and its players, many times in a funny way. He also does voiceovers for cartoon characters, including Smooth Smurf in the movie Smurfs 2, and a Lego version of himself in the Lego movie. Shaq also became a giant in the business world. He is seen and heard everywhere, on television, the radio, and the internet, endorsing products, including Oreos, Krispy Kreme donuts, auto insurance, credit cards, home security devices, an AC heart, a pain reliever. 
Icy Hot is especially perfect for Shaquille, who had his share of pain and injuries during his career. Shaq believes in telling the truth, so he won't promote a product unless he likes it or uses it himself. If I'm gonna sell it to the people, Shaq says, I have to be honest with the people. Shaquille also continues to follow his mom and stepdad's advice. He went back to school again to earn a doctorate in education from Barry University in Miami Shores, Florida. Shaq also earned another nickname with his degree, Dr. O'Neill. Just like his parents taught him, Shaquille continues to help other people. He serves Thanksgiving meals to homeless people every year. And he continues to dress up as Shaka Claus every Christmas and gives toys to poor children. After a mother of one of Shaquille's fans confronted him about the high cost of NBA players' sneakers, Shaq realized that average families might not be able to afford athletic sneakers that sell for hundreds of dollars. He decided to start his own affordable sneaker line. He insists the shoes look and feel just as good as the more expensive ones. He has sold over 150 million pairs. Shaquille was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame on September 9, 2016. His children, his mom, and countless other family members were all at the ceremony. Sadly, his stepfather, Philip, had died in 2013. Although he and Shani were divorced by then, she was there to support him, too. While accepting the honor with a speech, Shaquille said, when a father is quizzing his son on the great big players of the game, hopefully Shaquille O'Neal's name will be in the answer. Today, four of Shaq's children have followed in his footsteps. Son Sharif and daughter Amira both play basketball for their father's former college, Louisiana State University. His other son, Shakir, joined the basketball team at Texas Southern University in the fall of 2020. His youngest daughter, Miara, is a star on her high school team in California. Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame The Basketball Hall of Fame is located in Springfield, Massachusetts. It inducted its first members in 1959, and the current building opened in 1968. It is named for James Naismith, a Canadian-American athlete and educator who created the game of basketball in Springfield in 1891. The hall inducts new members every year. As of fall 2021, 401 members have been inducted. Although Shaq's own days on the basketball court are behind him, he is busier than ever. He was part owner of the NBA team the Sacramento Kings from 2013 to 2021, and currently owns a sit-down restaurant in Los Angeles called Shaquille's. In 2019, Shaq founded the Shaquille O'Neal Foundation, which partners with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America to help underserved youth. They have donated $10 million in supplies to schools across the country and committed $10 million in grants to black-owned businesses. In April 2020, Shaquille starred in his own reality television show called Shaq Life. In his autobiography, Shaq Uncut, Shaq said people often asked him how he wants to be remembered. He always responds, I was generous, I was dominant. I was unique. That would work. When asked by a reporter what his biggest regret was, Shaq answered nothing. Shaquille, whose image was made into a 9-foot, 1,200-pound statue dunking a basketball, which hangs outside of the Staples Center Arena in Los Angeles, is celebrated not just for his skills on the court but for his larger-than-life personality. The End